Hi, Deidre here from Our Upcycled Life. Are you tired of throwing away tin cans after just one use? Well, it's time to rethink that and save them from your recycling bin. Because today I've got 18 genius ways to upcycle your old tin cans into something amazing. I'm gonna show you how you can upcycle them into beautiful and practical DIYs. These ideas are perfect for any crafter at any skill level, and we've got lots of work. Let's get started. There are so many ways to upcycle tin cans, and since we have so many on our recycling bins, I'm gonna grab a few of them and I'm gonna get creative. When you're working with tin cans, it's recommended to paint them with either acrylic paint or chalk paint. Latex paint tends to peel and chip easy, so it's best to avoid using it. For our first project, I've taken some paper towel, cut them into strips, and then applying a layer of Mod Podge to the tin can and gently layering that paper towel strip on top of that. After that, I'm adding another layer of Mod Podge of the paper towel strips. This process is gonna help create a texture and durable surface on the tin can that can be painted and decorated afterwards to suit any style. Next up, I've prepared a batch of textured paste and I have a full tutorial on how to make it, which I'll link down below in the description. Using the texture paste, I'm applying a generous layer all over the tin can, covering it completely. After covering the tin can with the textured paste, I'm gonna use the end of my paintbrush and make swirls on it for a decorative touch. Once the entire can is covered, I'm gonna let it dry completely. And this is gonna create a sturdy surface that we can paint later on. I can't wait for this one to dry because it's going to be really unique and one of a kind. For the next tin can, I'm using my air dry clay. I'm gonna roll it out onto a flat surface until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Then I'm gonna use a ruler to cut the clay into strips and squares, giving them the appearance of bricks. To add texture to the clay, I'm gonna place a doily on top of it and use the rolling pin to gently roll over it. This is gonna create a lovely texture on those clay squares. The air dry clay with the textured effect resembles bricks when it's finished and it's an important to not roll too hard to keep the square shape and the clay intact. While the air dry clay is still wet, I'm going to apply a small amount of hot glue to the back of each clay square and then evenly space them out onto the surface of the tin can. This is going to create an illusion of a brick wall once the project is complete. the metal rim at the top of the bottom I'm just going to add some air dry clay around those areas and then I'm going to set it aside and let it dry completely. For the next tin can I prepared a batch of my homemade Mod Podge. You can check out that tutorial the link will be down below in the description. Using paper towel I've crumpled it up into strips to create a wrinkly texture and then I'm applying it to the tin can overlapping it and creating lots of texture. You can also do this technique using napkins or any other type of paper. The possibilities are endless. Now that my tin cans are completely dry, it's time to add some paint. To ensure that they all have an even base, I'm taking them outside and I'm going to give them a coat of my white spray paint. This is just going to give it a uniform look and you won't see that metal in the inside of the can. Now it's time to paint them. For the brick one, I'm using a terracotta colored paint. For the swirled one, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this one. I'm just going to start layering up different colors and see what inspires me. I've got some brown, I've got some black, I've got some white, and now I'm gonna go in with maybe a little bit of that terracotta. And once I had the terracotta on top of it, I thought maybe it would look really beautiful with some turquoise. I love this idea. And then I just added some twine around the top of it. For the textured paper towel one, I'm just painting with some of my white homemade chalk paint, and it's gonna give it almost like that stucco look. And for the brick one, I'm just going in and I'm dry brushing just a little bit of white on the top of those bricks. I'm going to sand it a little bit so it gives it a distressed look. I love this one, but if I was to do it again, I would have put the squares closer together. I've got some wooden beads and I'm just adding them as feet on the bottom of these tin cans. Put in some faux plants. If you're going to put in a real plant, make sure you drill a few holes in the bottom. What a great way to upcycle some tin cans. Next tin can upcycle, these are a little bit bigger. These are coffee canisters and I'm going to take out the bottom. When 
when you're removing the tops or the bottoms out of tin cans, you want to make sure that you have a can opener that's going to smooth down the edges. This one works perfect. Now, you want to make sure that you are putting the seam at the back of your project. I'm fortunate my husband has a vise out in his garage, so I can squish these together really well. If not, you can just use your hands and maybe a rubber mallet and work away at it. have them all squished I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of each one making sure that I'm drilling that hole where the seam is because that's gonna be the back now I'm gonna take them outside and I'm going to give them a coat of my spray primer while I'm waiting for that primer to dry I've got a piece of scrap pine and I'm painting it with some of my homemade stain it's so easy to make I have a full tutorial I'll link that down below in the description also the primer is dry on my tin cans. Now I've sprayed it with primer because it's gonna let the paint adhere better. Now I'm painting it with some of my homemade chalk paint, letting it dry, and now I'm going to add some transfers on it. If you're following along here for a while, you know I love my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfers. That's the technique that I'm gonna do on these tin cans. Using my Mod Podge mat, I've printed these graphics off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text, and then I'm applying it onto my project, getting all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it, and then setting it aside and letting it dry for 24 hours. It's been 24 hours, now I've dampened it with a little bit of water on a rag, and then I'm taking my fingers and rubbing away the paper, and as we do that, the graphics are gonna be left on our project. We're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. We're now ready to mount these on that piece of pine. I'm centering them exactly where I want them and then I'm gonna screw them onto that piece of wood, fill them up with a little bit of moss, add some faux flowers, and I think this is a really beautiful way to upcycle tin cans and it's really simple to put together. We're now ready to go on to our next tin can upcycle. Using some homemade Mod Podge, again, we're back to the paper towel. I've ripped it into strips putting it in the homemade Mod Podge and applying it all over that tin can and letting it be really textured. This is now completely dry and I'm painting it with some white chalk paint and I wanna add a base to it. I always save the lids from my tin cans also. So I've got three here. I'm stacking them up, gluing them together with my hot glue gun. So it's gonna act like a pedestal. And then I'm going to paint it with some of my chalk paint. And then we're going to glue it onto the bottom of this tin can. I've just used some hot glue here. You can also add a little bit of E6000 if you want it to be really secure and not move. And I've created a really cute little pencil and marker and scissor holder for my craft room, just using a tin can and some glass lid jars. This one is really adorable. These are some tuna tin cans. I've painted them with some black spray paint. I've got a spindle from my stash and I've got some scrapbook paper. Now I wanna decoupage with my scrapbooking paper and you've probably seen me do this before. If you have really thick paper, you can use some packing tape, put it along the back of your scrapbooking paper, tear away that packing tape and as you do, it's taking away a layer of that paper and making it thinner and easier to decoupage with. And once I have that all removed, I've cut the strips to fit around those tin cans using my Mod Podge. I'm decoupaging them onto them. Now I've got my spindles, I've cut them to size using my E6000. I'm gluing a portion of that spindle into each of these tin cans. And this is what I created, a little tiered shelf that would look beautiful in a primitive kitchen. This tin can upcycle is really simple, but it turns out really pretty. I spray painted my tin can with some white spray paint, let it dry, and then I got out my dollar store twine and I'm just wrapping it around the tin can. I wanna add a pretty fringe to this. So I got out my macrame cord and I cut a piece a little bit bigger than the top of the tin can and then just cut a whole bunch of pieces that were all the same length that we can do a knot around that first piece of macrame cord, lark's head knot, and we're going to tie those all along that first piece of macrame cord. Once I cut it down to size, I took my comb and I combed it out so it was nice and fluffy looking. And then we're just gonna hot glue it around the top of that tin can. 
This has a real boho feel to it and um, I really like it. Now we're gonna add those beads onto the bottom again with a little bit of hot glue. You can also add some E6000 if you want it to really stay put. And if you're really enjoying these tin can upcycles, I'd love for you to hit the like button. It really helps support my channel and I appreciate all of your support. Okay, another tin can upcycle. I'm going to paint this with some white spray paint and then put on some white chalk paint on top of that. Add a graphic using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. This is sat for 24 hours. I'm just rubbing off the paper. You can seal any of these projects up with some polyacrylic sealer also, and it just makes them a little bit more durable and you can dust them down if you need to. I'm gonna add a candle in the middle of this. I picked up these wicks off of Amazon and I'm just melting an old candle that I had in my stash and pouring it really gently into that tin can. We're gonna trim down the wick when it's all completely set. I love making these to set them out in the summer on my patio or on the deck and it's a really great way to use up extra bits of your candles and you can customize them. This was a big spaghetti can jar and I'm going to spray paint it with some black spray paint so it's easy to paint on top of. Now I've painted on my white chalk paint on top of it. It's completely dry and I'm just going to take the edge of my scissors and just make it look really rustic. I made my own custom napkin. I have a full tutorial on how to make custom make your own napkins. I'll put the link below down in the description so you can check that out. And we're gonna decoupage it onto this tin can. I like using the water transfer method when I'm using my homemade napkins. Put my napkin on a plastic sleeve, added some Mod Podge on my tin can, pick up that plastic sleeve, apply the napkin, and it's that easy to put a graphic on any of your DIY projects, especially on tin cans. Next tin can project is this one that I've had on a shelf for a while. I love the patina of it. I'm not gonna paint it, but I got out my Cricut and I'm cutting some vinyl and I'm going to add a graphic on it with some permanent vinyl, cleaning up that tin can with a little bit of alcohol before I apply it, wrapping some wire around a pencil to, to create a handle for the top of that tin can. I just used my drill and I cut and I drilled holes in either side of that tin can, applying it, added some of my junk and crap and bits and pieces. I love this one. My head swirls sometimes with things that I save out of the recycling bin and what I can do with them. At some point, how many tin cans is too many tin cans to save? But as you can see by watching this video, there's so many ideas and so many different designs that you can do on tin cans and incorporate into home decor or make them for gifts for family or friends, or you can also sell them. Some of these are some of my best sellers when I go to craft sales or craft fairs. This one, I just put some spray adhesive on a stencil, laid it on the tin can, used some of my acrylic paint to stencil on top of it, and it created this beautiful design. I've got a piece of a spindle. I used my E6000 to glue to the bottom, filled the tin can up with some sand, added some candles. Genius idea for the patio for the summer. Now I've got a big coffee canister. I took it outside, sprayed it with some black spray paint, then I'm going over it with some of my white homemade chalk paint. I printed off this graphic on my laser jet printer using the homemade napkin technique again, which works fantastic with this. It's better to use the homemade napkin technique with the tin cans because there's so many ribs in them, it's hard to rub off the paper. This works the best. Applied it to the tin can with a little bit of Mod Podge. I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut an X in the top of the lid. We are going to seal this up with some engine enamel because this is gonna go in my bathroom and I want it to be durable and be able to wipe down. Add some of my garbage bags, pull it through that lid, and this is a really great way to keep all your bags in one place and it looks pretty. Now this is a different variation of the tin can that I just made with the junk and crap graphic, except this one I smushed. I put in my vise, I pulled the bottom together, printed off just junk and crap, adding, adding it to that, I guess you call it a smashed tin can, centering it, pressing it down really well. I'm going to add a wire hanger on the sides 
And this one is really cute to hang in the garden. You can fill it full of some annuals and uh, it has drainage out the bottom or I have this hanging on the outside of my shed just with some old bits and pieces in it. Another squished or smashed tin can and I'm adding some homemade sand paint. The texture that this paint recipe makes is, I love it. Um, I put two coats of the sand paint on and then sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I made another fringe like what we've made in one of those other previous projects and I'm just hot gluing it to the bottom of the tin can, adding a faux flower. It has a really nice boho vibe to it. Another smashed tin can and one ply of a beautiful floral napkin. We're going to decoupage this onto the tin can. I've painted the tin can with some of my white chalk paint and then I'm going to add that napkin on top of it. If you use a darker color underneath your napkins, it's going to show through. So I always like to paint my projects with a lighter color and then decoupage on top of that. So I'm just basically taking this napkin, putting on that plastic sleeve, just like we do with our homemade napkins, and then applying it. It just gives it a nicer, smoother finish, and you're not gonna have as many bubbles and wrinkles when you do this technique. And then you just peel away that plastic sleeve. You can take your fingers and you can smooth it out a little bit if you need to, or use a little bit of plastic wrap and that will help smooth it out. I'm making sure I've got the edges sealed down really well. And then I'm going to do the back of it, applying a little bit of Mod Podge, picking up that napkin, applying it, getting all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it dry. Once it's dry, you can go back in with a little piece of sandpaper and sand off any extra napkin that you have hanging off the edges. I had this fringe that I picked up at the thrift store. I love it, it looks great with this napkin. Hot glued it, filled it with some craft supplies. I hope you're not getting tired of these upcycled tin cans because there's so many ideas that you can do with these that I could keep going on for hours and hours and even just turning them into planters. There's so many ideas of ways you can decorate them. My husband's a big coffee drinker. We have piles of coffee canisters. So I save as many as I can that I can upcycle. So I have three here that I'm going to do. I'm putting them in the vise and I'm squishing them down at the bottom. When you're squishing them, like I said before, make sure you have your seam at the back or when you're doing your project, it's gonna look kind of funky because you're gonna have your seam of the tin can not where it's supposed to be. I'm going to take these outside and spray them with the BIM primer. Now let's decoupage some fabric. This is an old tea towel. It had some holes and stains in it, but I'm going to use a portion of it to decoupage on one of these tin cans. Whenever I'm at the thrift store and if I see a piece of fabric that catches my eye or a tea towel or a pillowcase, I always grab them and even if they have a little rip or a tear in them because you can cut them up and you can do a project like this. I'm just adding my Mod Podge onto the tin can and decoupaging on that tea towel. I just cut out a portion that I thought would look the best on that tin can. Once I have it exactly where I want it, I'm going in and I'm putting Mod Podge on top of it. I love the retro feel of this tea towel. I've drilled a hole in the back and I've got a piece of pine that I stained again with my homemade stain. I'm just screwing that tin can into it, filling it up with some moss, putting in some faux flowers. If you wanted to put this outside, you could put in some real flowers and hung it up and it's just beautiful. And it's what all these pieces are one of a kind because you're using unique items to create these upcycles. We already know this, but upcycling tin cans is so good for the environment because it reduces waste and saves resources. And by using cans with a new purpose, we can help keep them out of the landfills and reduce energy needed to make new things. So when you upcycle, you're not only being creative, you're also helping to protect the planet. So for this upcycle, I had a broken handle off of a shovel. I drilled two holes in the back of the tin can. We're gonna attach that handle when this is all finished. 
making a homemade napkin on my laser jet printer. I'm cutting out the napkin off of that piece of paper that we put through the printer and we're going to apply it onto that tin can. Using a plastic sleeve, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of water onto it and then I like to, I'm not sure if I showed it in some of the other videos up close or not, but I like to take the edge of my scissors and just go around the edge of that napkin to create a ragged edge. It's when you put it on your project, it just helps it blend in better. Just be really careful. You don't want to rip or tear that napkin as you're removing that edge. We're going to apply that Mod Podge onto the tin can, pick up that plastic sleeve and attach it on there now it's nice doing this technique like i said before because you can get in all of those grooves you don't have to worry about rubbing off paper if you're doing the reverse technique works really well peel off that plastic sleeve let it dry completely and then you can seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer that saran wrap tip works fantastic for getting any wrinkles and bubbles out also I'm always dragging home broken shovels, broken rakes, broken pitchforks for projects exactly like this. You can cut the broken pieces off and then reuse them in another project. Now I'm gonna turn this one into a planter, but we don't want the dirt to completely fall out the bottom because there is a little bit of an opening after we've smashed them together. I like to put a couple coffee filters in the bottom. That's gonna hold the dirt in there, but it's also gonna let it drain added some spring flowers and it's a perfect planter for outside of my garden for the spring season. This one's the same concept, different spin, spray painting it with some of my turquoise blue spray paint. I've drilled some holes in the top. I cut this graphic out on my Cricut again and I'm just applying it and then I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer Going to put some coffee liner in the bottom again, fill it up with dirt, add a handle with a little bit of wire, and it's another way or another design of using some tin cans or coffee canisters to create beautiful decor for your garden or any season. You can use a design like this and put a fall theme, Christmas theme, Easter theme, so many ideas. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's given you some inspiration to grab those tin cans out of your recycling bin and gurt crafting. I'd love to know down in the comments, what was your favorite tin can upcycle today? And I'd love for you to hit that like button if you really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, have a great day. And if you love this video, I'm sure you're gonna love either of these next two. Take care.